everyone. <clears throat> uh, my name is uh, Mohawk, as commonly known as Mohammed Ka. Uh, I'm the CEO of Block TV and uh, CEO of the Block Entertainment. Um, I'm really happy to be here, and I welcome everybody here today. Uh, the, the reason why we're here is to uh, introduce our friend from South Africa, Sedu, uh, who works at the Shia Publishing Company, a music uh, publishing company here in the Gambia. And we would like him to talk to us about what he does and his reason of coming here in the Gambia and also coming to NCAC to host this um, beautiful event. Uh, together with uh, in, um, Mr. S uh, Shia Omar, uh, and would like to welcome everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for for the introduction, Mo. Yeah. As Mo said, my name is Seydou Idrisu, originally from Ghana, but I live in South Africa. I work with a company called Share Publishing, as you said. Share Publishing is an independent publishing company within the African continent but we also affiliate with a company called Downtown Music Services called DMS. We, uh, DMS is the mother company of Share. So basically our head office is in the New York. Then we have branches um, I mean, every continent. So Share represents Downtown within African continent. And we have office in UK, you know, France, Germany, and Japan as well. So basically what we do is uh, we represent song and songwriters for the, their intellectual property right. You agree with me when a song is recorded, mixed, mastered, it comes with uh, two copyrights, which is the master right and the composition right. So within the master right, you see a label is involved, the composition right, the publisher is involved. There's a label services, there's a publishing services. So we come in as a publisher, we make sure we do administration, whereby when your music gets used, either they play it on radio, TV, they use it for film, advert, documentary, you are compensated. So generally, that's the kind of the nature of the business that we do. So we represent the rights of right owners, we register the works worldwide. Then in terms of registration, it also have different kind of royalties that you're supposed to be benefiting from. So for instance, we have a, a performance royalties, we have mechanicals, synchronization, and print royalties. So all these four royalties are areas that you can make money out of your composition right. So in terms of composition right, you'll find out that there's an artist who came and performed a song, but the actual song is written by somebody else. So within the composition of the person who wrote the lyrics of the song, or the people that create the melodies, they are the right owners of the composition, and this was be benefiting. So that is where we come in. So after the recording, you will have a split sheet, and that split sheet will give an idea who owns what. And it makes it easy. In terms of publishing, we don't have an artist or a producer. We have a composer and an author. So these two will come up with a split sheet. Then the split sheet will be given to us as your publisher, we notify the works worldwide. We work in hands with collecting societies. So that makes that gives back the power to a local society. So like Gambia would have have a collecting society that licenses songs for TV uh, programs, you know, uh, production houses to use the content. Then once they use it, they'll be they'll be getting paid. So based on the registration of the publisher, people will get to identify the split within each and every song and how they will do the distribution. So it looks very simple, but internal is a whole lot of work needs to be done because it goes with details. Publishing is basically, you need to have details and do the administrative works. Beside that details and administration, now you have this exploitation, how you make sure that you generate income, that same song, you don't sell it, but you make the song makes money for the right owners. That's where everybody will split. So there's a whole lot of work. After your work, after like recording out, yours is to make sure that the song will now be on road, people playing it. But there's an internal work supposed to be done by publishers where you can see money. Especially when we're talking about um, licensing a song for maybe a huge project like Netflix, you know, maybe Hollywood, movies, you see, it, it entails a lot of details, 
And with that split sheet, you can uh, you cannot license the song. Because every day you license the song without the, 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 the proper detail, which is the split, it, it will come back. When the song started making money, somebody can come and say, hey, how do you get this song? And it will end up suing and all those things. So it's always very, very important that you have a publisher involved in your, in your career, either a producer who is a, a composer or author who happens to be the artist or a company, so that the person will be doing the administration on your behalf properly. So that when there is money, everybody will be, will be compensated whatever that is due for them. And you see, in terms of publishing, you might find out that if a song is not a hit song, there's no issue on it. When a song started making money, that's where there's always a problem. So these issues will come every time when the work is not registered properly. Even do, doing some research on certain, I mean, artists here, you could find out that some of them tried to register the work, but they didn't do it properly. So at the end of the day, if the song blow up, trust me, it's, also gonna, it's always going to be a problem. So it's our responsibility as a music publisher, especially me, Seidu, it's my responsibility to travel within West Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, to educate people about how composition right works. So the more people understand it, the more Africa can make money because the demand now is on Africa. People want to use African content for their programs. They want it, so probably they'll go and use it, and when they use it, they don't know who are the right owners. The money will be sitting somewhere else. You see, so maybe you might sit here, having money sitting in different countries, you don't have access to it because you didn't do the right thing. So at every day, these things affect not only you, it affects us as an Africans. Because, for instance, if your song is used, let's say, one of the movies in Hollywood, it's a huge money. The money is stuck in America. You sitting here, or we sitting here, hungry, but we actually have a chunk of money sitting somewhere. It's affecting the whole continent. So the challenge is how can we kind of leverage and break down this kind of uh, misunderstanding and, and uh, ignorance of the industry. So that is why I'm here. I'm here to unfold publishing so that we all, to become a topic that we all discuss Whatever that you don't understand, you open up, you ask questions, then at the end of the day, we'll get to the bottom of where the challenge is and we'll fix it so that everybody will smile. This thing that we're talking right now is something that we're just talking about. A few years down the line, we'll see the importance of it. Yeah, so that's what I'm here. Thank you very much. And uh, you're most welcome. And as I said initially from your arrival, I said you're most welcome to the Gambia. And uh, this is a great pleasure for us to receive you in here. We have a copyright law since 2004. And uh, it has also a regulation since 2018. And that has made us to put all the artistic associations, and it's actually under the mandate of the National Center for Arts and Culture since 2004 up to date. And uh, I think, which is the government of the Gambia and this particular office, we have put up the artistic association since 2012. All the artistic associations have been formed. Music Union, Theatre Union, Film, in, film, uh, film Producers Association, Visual Arts Association, the Fashion Designers, yeah. all the 11 artistic associations, and we formed the Collecting Society of the Gambia called the CSG. It is in existence. It's rather unfortunate that we have not been able to collect or to do collection all these years because I think things like this have been lacking. The industry was not matured enough to have created labels and publishers and publishing companies. Most people have been only venturing into the performance sector, either musicians or technicians, producers and the like. So the other sector, which is the business aspect of it, has been very much lacking. And as a result, entrepreneurship becomes a challenge 
in the country in terms of the way forward. Despite the government has completed all its mechanism needed to set a copyright industry, yet still copyright could not work by virtue of the fact that one, the law is there. If you violate the law, you are taken to court. There is a law to judge you. The regulation is there, and it has always been there since 2018. It's laying down there. It needs implementation. And all these things have been, the institution is there. There is a copyright office under this office that is also responsible for the registration of work, and we have registered more than thousands of works that are actually not to be copyright seeked. But the question of giving power of attorneys to the collecting society for them to act on behalf of the artists. We have only two artists since 2007. Only two artists have given their rights to the collecting society of the Gambia to collect their rights on behalf of them. And that is G and Hakim. In fact, the collecting society cannot work just on behalf of only two individuals. Unfortunately, all the rest of musicians in this country, including, me? including yourself, including himself and his works, have never been registered and they are not registered. And all the big stars in this country, none of them, his work, is registered in this country for copyright. It seems they do not understand the job. And despite all the sensitization we had done, and all the workshops, all the seminars, we have done for musicians in this country. They still do not understand, and they will still go out there and uh, yeah, boy, copyright people like told man, copyright is not working, man. They are not doing it. When they forgot to understand that, government has done the legal instruments there. It's already there. We are prosecuting right now. I have about three cases that are under prosecution for the literary art industry. One is a book that they pirated by a school and it is taken to court. And that court has already been closed and now there is a fine of over three million dollars for that school to pay. The school is still in negotiation with the publisher of the book and that is literally a book. So there is copyright in this country. There is also a case going on in, in court for this TV cable scrambles. That's those who will scramble one television station, uh, one cable, and then be spreading it around the neighborhood, selling it to the neighborhood, so as for them to sell them a channel. It's illegal. A lot of you are doing it in your homes or in their houses, and do not understand that it's against the law. There is a prosecution for a group that is doing that business in particular neighborhood, that they will take those channels, those um, channels, and selling it to the neighborhoods, Whilst they will pay just a little money and then they will be like they are supplying them. It's illegal. We have a case in court that is still pending. And it's against copyright law. No. There is an infringement of music. Somebody who used somebody's music without his authority because he gave it as a sample and then he went over down there and then spit on it, as they will always say. I spit on the mic. They spit on it and now that spit is causing a lot of trouble for the guy. It is in court. So there is copyright in this country. What is not happening is the second segment, which is collection of royalties. The government's role is not collection of royalties because it is supposed to be done by a CSO, a CMO, which is a collective management organization. And we have formed that. We have helped them to form that. They are going for their fourth term, their executive. Three presidents have resigned. They could not end up the job, and now we are going again on this Saturday. Tomorrow, they are going on a congress at the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, for your information. Tomorrow, they are having a congress of all the artistic associations again to select a new board, because this board could not work it out, or they are, most of them have with room, because they do not understand the nitty-gritty of copyright and its instrument. We are having a problem. And I think that's why I said we, we, we open our hands very openly for your arrival, for you to inspire them. In fact, we had Roy Hoja. He's from South Africa. I'm sure you know him. Rob was here. He trained the, the executives of the Copyright Society and gave them a roadmap 
for them to implement. You remember, since the time of Rob Hoja from South Africa coming over here doing that training up till now, we still could not have them to implement that simple work plan. We have a capacity gap problem in our artistic community. Or people who are taking responsibility are too busy for the job that they claim to do. Or they are not seeing the benefit. And on scientific calculations for this country that we done, we did in 2018 to 2020, this country is losing 30 million dollars. Not yearly. 30 million dollars every month in terms of co copyright stuff. 30 million dollars is losing in this country. It's going in vain. There is a lot of mechanical rights and because this is the center of production for the region here, whether it's Senegal, their artists, this is their heaven. Um, Guinea Conakry, this is their heaven. So even Sierra Leone, this is their heaven, and Nigeria. They will all come over in this particular country to scramble for big events around here because Gambians are show goers. They love entertainment and it pays off. You get your return on investment. But all the mechanical rights that we are, losing, uh, we are having in this country, they are going in vain because we don't collect anything. So I think this should be an eye-opener for them to understand. And whenever we talk to them, the, issue, the simple issue is for just for them to get up and take their music and go to the collecting society of the Gambia and say, I want to give you, I want to sign this form to give you a power of authority to act on my behalf, on my music, because that's what the law says. We cannot collect for anybody, and nobody can collect for them. And, but the society cannot have musicians coming forward to put their musical rights, to give them the chance to do so. This is the problem. And even M. Simbai have never, has done so many music and singles and you know, albums, but he has never re registered any of his work. Look at him. You look at him, face him. This is what they are doing. They are not putting their works in the domain of copyright, and they will still be querying copyright is not working. How can copyright work when these people are not giving you the power of attorney for the collecting society to act? The collecting society can never act. And this is what the situation is in this country. Unless we are able to understand that, they start bringing their works to the collecting society to act on their behalf, copyright will never work. And I am reiterating this. There is nothing that the Gambia government and the National Center for Arts and Culture, and particularly my office, or to the Gambian music industry, or to the Gambian creative and performing arts industry, our role is to make sure we create the environment and the regulations and the laws. There is not a single law in this country that is not already being enacted and even put together. Even the last time, the last information I want to give is, in fact, we have ended up even merging these two offices, which we call now the Gambia Intellectual Property Office. Merging both trademark, industrial properties, innovation, you know, creative innovations, and copyright into one office. It's at the Ministry of Justice. We've just done that. In fact, Parliament has just passed that very recently, and the Cabinet has just passed the resolution about last month. I'm about to start recruiting them or informing them about that. That now, copyright, together with trademark, industrial property, it's all in one office. The building is nicely built. It's right at the Ministry of Justice. There's the new building you see there at the back. It's the new GIPO office. They call it now GIPO. That is the Gambia Intellectual Property Office. And now, the Copyright Office is moving to that building. The Trademark Office is moving into that building. And of course, Industrial Property is also moving to that building so that it will become one office, one stop shop for both copy, all intellectual property matters, which is certainly already, the office is already open. It's almost two months. But we have not even seen even a single musician entering into that. But all the other sectors have entered that office and then come to find out in that office. This is how the industry is about, because they are very much self-centered. Thank you very much. That's what I wanted. Well, um, thank you, Shia Omar, for that brief.
hammering. Hammering. It's not hammering. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to hammer us. <laughs> um, anyway, um, what we're going to do is we have to sensitize more mm -hmm. on what he was just saying. Especially the media, we would like the media to be sensitizing about copyright in the Gambia so that people will be aware of how copyright works. And on that note, I would like uh, to um, have Mr. Seydou explain to the people, like to the public, about how publishing and copyright and uh, Gambia Collecting Society works together, how it works. Yep. And he will just briefly explain everything, how it works. Thank you. Now the solution then. Give us the solution. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate um, you know, your submission. It's actually... I mean, breaking down everything. I thought all your explanation was not existing in Gambia. So I'm really surprised to hear all this thing that you are explaining. You have this, you have all the structures. The only challenge that I'm seeing that is you guys are facing here is implementation. Yeah. So in this case, in terms of um, right owners, like let's talk about music right owners, like you insist they don't go to the, uh, the, well, to the society to register their works. Um, this is an advice to all collectors, uh, to all right owners. You see, um, your first priority in terms of work registration is your local territory. Mm -hmm. Your local territory is where you can, you can start making money before you think of international. In a, to, to cut it short, before you make $1,000 from UK, you've already made $5,000 in Gambia. Mm -hmm. You see, but you cannot make that $5,000 if you don't give the right to the society to represent you. Where the money is going to come from? The broadcasters, like media, TV station, radio station, uh, hotels, pubs, clubs. Music users, they are to pay the money to the collective society. And before the collective society will go to the music users, they have to have the right from you. Mm -hmm. Because they don't own those rights. You have to sign those rights to them before they can represent you. So it's more like a representation, like we also do. So before I could represent you, I'm supposed to have the right from you to represent you. So if you don't give the society the right to represent you, anybody can use the music here, but you're not going to get paid. Especially right now, we are in a digital world. When you put your songs on digital platforms, like your Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Boomplay, Audio Mac, and all those things, you get the streaming money, all right, which is the sales. But the composition, which is the intellectual property money, you don't get it. You could only get it through a publisher and a collecting society. These two work together to collect those monies from the DSPs. The money will be paid all right. You're not going to get paid because the works are not re registered. And you can only get paid when they have the data of your works within their database. That's how you get paid. So it is... It, it is a challenge to hear this because at every day, like we said, musicians like in Africa, we mostly don't have money. And it's not that we don't have money because we don't do the right thing. You see, and the world is changing. It's completely changing now. Everything is digital. You can release a song today, right? Maybe today's date, or let's say you release it tomorrow's day, 21st of May, right? Australia is leading you plus minus seven, eight hours, nine hours, thereabout. So before you, you have access to your own music. Australia already have access to it. That tells you the power of music now we are, we are sitting now. So by the time you, you get access to stream that song, someone outside your own territory is streaming it already. And streaming means money. There's no more piracy. Before somebody put your song on a CD, go and sell it. No, it's not more there. Digital make it easy for everybody, and people can access it at any time they want. You see? So if you don't do the right thing, you have to blame yourself, not the music. The music is doing well, you don't do the right thing. Doing right thing means to affiliate the right organization 
so that they support you. I made mention of four different kind of royalties. All these royalties has a source of income. It has source that it, it comes from. Like you mentioned of collect society. In a, in a established countries, let's say South Africa example, all uh, royalty has its own society that collects it. When you're talking about the masters, it has a company that represents the master rights income, which is the sound recording. You're talking of mechanical royalties, there is a society that collects only mechanical royalties. You talk about performance royalties, there's a society that collects only performance. You talk about needle time, there's a society, neighboring rights. Already I mentioned five. There's still more. So for instance, if you are making money from all these five, how are you going to be poor? No, you will never be poor. Because you make money from all these sources. Mm -hmm. How can you make those money if you don't do the right thing? You see, so it is very, very important. Music industry is, I can tell you, is one of the richest industries that you can think of. Very rich. And it's a lifetime. Your children, your grandchildren will come and benefit it when you do the right thing. But if you don't do the right thing, you're actually killing yourself and killing your children and your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Because whenever that you pass on, they don't have anything to, to rely on. You, you, you get what I mean? And it's quite simple. Common registration. Simple as that. Go there, give your information, they represent you. That's it. You look at international societies, someone can have only one, two songs, and he's making money. He's living on those two songs. Mm -hmm. You can have 20 songs, and you are hungry. Mm -hmm. Simple, just ask yourself why. <laughs> you see, it's your own mistake. Do the right thing. So, but we, as publishers, that's why I already said it's our responsibility, my responsibility, to partner with the local organizing team, which is the college society, so that we put up proper structures, educate people, because all these things that we are talking about is lack of education. Most of the artists, the producers, the, the, the creators, they don't know what we're talking about. Their own is just to go to studio and come out with a product, and that's it. But the business side is supposed to be run by the business people. That's how it's supposed to be. But because you don't have the right team behind you to take the process of all this, you wouldn't know it. So I understand that is a situation that we, are all, we all find ourselves. So now we have to come in as a team and see how we can resolve this. And resolving it is to educate each other. Meeting, just sit with somebody, take the person through the process. You will see the person is a big, he has a big name, but he doesn't know this. A lot. Even if you go to your Nigeria, and it happens like that. I work with a whole lot of your P-squares and all those big names that you may mention of. But from the beginning, you will see that they got thousands of hits, but they don't know what we're talking about. Their own is just to get a show, go and perform, and make their money. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, when it came to a point that you cannot make a show, how are you going to survive? That is the main question. And all this thing that we are talking about is more like your pension money. Mm -hmm. The money is there. If you don't collect it, it will be sitting there. Every time they distribute the money, it will add up, it will add up, it will add up till the time that you say, hey, I want the money, and they'll give it to you. That is your pension money. So if you are working with that pension, then it means that your future is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So guys, I know this is, it's not a difficult thing. It's, it's definitely not a difficult thing. It's just a matter of reaching out to the right people, and they will make sure that you're, you are structured properly, and everybody's going to be happy. Like he said, when you do events, every event that you do, and if your structures is done properly, ticket sales, there's supposed to be royalties coming from that. The, the royalties is not coming from your performance fee, no. You collect the money from the booking agent or the event organizer, you are paid off already. 
Now, every sales that you do, there's supposed to be a royalty on it. That is, is when it's, it, it, it's just a, 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 an industry is properly structured. But a situation whereby the industry is not 100% structured, we have something called a blanket license. Mm -hmm. Each and every venue pay this blanket license for the usage of the music. And that's how the society will distribute the money. So for instance, we represent almost all the international big companies that you can think of. Your Warner, Cobalt, Downtown. And this company has huge catalog, centric music. We represent all in Africa. So no matter how it is, we are also losing money here. Because Africa also consumes a lot of international content. And most of the international content we control. So, and once they consume it here, we don't get the money. So we are also losing. <laughs> you see, so this thing, it becomes like um, a collective thing that we all have to put our heads together, including the organization, which is the, the CMO that he mentioned, that uh, collective management organization, so that we put ideas together and see how we can develop the, the industry so that everybody gets compensated. But as it is now, the music users, the ones that are consuming, they use the music for their own business, but the people that own the music, we don't make money from the business that they are making. But they use the money and make money, and we own those rights, we sit hungry. So this is a challenge that we all, music users, music creators, we all have to put our heads together and see how we can break through this. And that breakthrough is to educate each other, to let people understand that. Whatever money that you are making from the music, you're still not making another one. So forget about the one that you are making is yours, but you have another money sitting somewhere that you don't make. That is what we are talking about. So no matter how it is, you are part of the problem. Whether you are, you, you, you are a big name or you, 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 you are, your name is not big, whatever, you are part of that problem. How can we resolve it? So we all have to come out together, sit, and come up with solutions, how we can resolve. This is a nationwide kind of project that everybody has to rally behind it, make sure that you support the agenda, make sure your works are registered. Once your works are registered, you go and sit down. It will now become a responsibility of the society to make sure they collect, because now the situation is that they don't have the data. And if you don't have a data, what are you collecting? So when you give them the data, they can come and tell you that, no, we can't collect because you're giving them what they didn't have. Now they have it, so they have to go and, and, and collect. Now, based on the power you gave them, when they go to, let's say, Tamala, right? Hey, Tamala, this is the certificate that we have from the government, and this is the right owners that we represent. You use music here. We want you to pay for that. Tamala cannot say no because they use music. They have to pay. But if they don't have all this support, they can't go and collect. So mm -hmm. it's a collective thing. Let's all make sure that we support this. Everybody come together, make sure that the right thing is done. And at every day, everybody's going to be happy because you're going to make money. People, you make money. There's a lot of tourists that are coming here. Mm -hmm. And everybody is consuming music. How can you make that music that they are consuming money if you are not in line with your CMO? You're not. Thank you very much. Very yeah. I think that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. That um, has brought us to, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to say, like, um, in today we have also uh, Alaji Lee from Holy, Holy Family Band. He's also as a producer and a musician, and Tra from Halab Studios, also a musician and a producer. Maybe they, they would love to add something. M. Simba here is also here as a musician and a songwriter. Um, maybe they would like to add something, Allah? <laughs> yes. Say, um, because I hear what you said, and definitely it makes sense. Uh, we've been here making music for so long, and not benefiting nothing out of it. And definitely, this is uh, something that stages us as producers, as musicians. Right now, I'm talking to 
the whole Gambian musician, like the art itself. We have to do something, come together, and try to make sure um, the music is going on. And we try to be together and make sure um, the royalties, we fight to have our own royalties. I think this is really very important because, as you said, um, like I said, we've been doing music for, like I said, decades, you know, um, without collecting nothing. So it means, you know, we are getting older. And our young brothers and sisters, too, um, we have to fight for them and the next generation as well, you know. And uh, I thank you so much. I don't have much to say, but uh, you really inspire me. And then uh, I would like to say to all the Gambian musicians to definitely come together and we join hands together and we make it possible. Yes. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, okay. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Tra from Haram Sijo, from the Producers Association, AGMP. Okay, today is a very big day, truly speaking. And no matter the, the number of people here, but the quality of the, the program is excellent, definitely. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I just want to go to the next step. Okay, if we organize uh, a kind of uh, 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 like a program, and uh, for example, uh, we go and meet the artists and tell them that, ask them if they know that they are losing 30 million every day, every month. Sorry, that's number one thing. Ask them the opinion about the opinion about that, because the thing is like uh, uh, SOJ say, everything is done, the act is there. So the only problem we have is to go and register. I think that's the problem, right? That's it. Why that should be a problem? Maybe it's money. They don't have the money. And the money no, is no, 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 but that's, that's it. That's the problem. It's only so, 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 so I think, I think. Yeah, the money is the problem. Maybe there's another way. There's another thing, but, but I think the, 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 the way we did with COVID-19, how many songs we did for COVID to sensitize people, to tell them that you must do this, you must do that. And we are not able to do one song to sensitize people, to tell them that go and register. And this is your right. I think the same thing we did with COVID, we should do that. We should do the same thing from maybe next week, try to, to, to release something like two albums or three albums with all the singers. If you do that, everybody will be aware. And I think we will go and register. Thanks so much. Definitely, this opened a lot of other avenues for us musicians. And uh, my brother, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my brother, welcome to Gambia once more. My name is M. Simba. You know, I'm an artist. At the same time, I'm a, I'm a uh, presenter from Block TV also. I'm doing two things together. OK, uh, I just hear what you said just now. But the problem is, we artists, we, do, we, we, don't, we don't create, uh, to, to, we don't utilize our opportunity because of, uh, we are so lazy and we, we, are, we start to blame, you know, so many people in the Gambia and told them, you know, Yo, you don't do this, you don't do this, our music is not going. And we have to build ourselves too because it's all, all the problem is caused by ourselves because of we have to understand what is music take. What is music, uh, how to call it, do for us. What is music is concerned for, for, for the people. Because of uh, we Gambian artists, we don't know what music going to bring to us. Because we don't, we don't learn. We just wake up in the morning and do music. We don't decide, we don't do nothing. That's bad, you know, because of uh, we don't ask so many cakes on, we don't, we don't go to, you know, people who know music, who can, uh, you know, write music and uh, uh, know uh, how to call history of music and ask them what we're going to do, at, what we're going to achieve inside our work. 
That's the, that's the problem. Uh, what I'm gonna what what I'm gonna ask you is like you say about this registration, you know, about registration, you know, how to make money online or how to cover your song, how to gonna protect your song. Okay, like for example, me if I wanna work with you, what is the you know request and the, the, the type of like music you want and document I'm gonna produce to you. So I wanna know that so I can know what I'm going to do next to prepare myself. Because it's not easy. I don't know about you, what you said just now. I don't know nothing about that. Trust me. You know, I'm lost, to be frank. I'm lost. Because SOJ tried to, like, uh, told MC by is not registered. Yeah, I don't know. Because we, do, we just wake up in the morning and go do music. We don't know what music takes. <laughs> no, that's the truth. That's true. We don't learn. We don't have music school. We don't have nothing in this country. You know, we just do it for the love. We just do it for the, for the, for the, for the person. But we don't know. So thanks once again. We very appreciate uh, this, this your, this journey to Gambia. And you know, God bless you. And I think we'll be able to learn from your, you know, work and from your experience, from your, you know, time. Thank you so much. You know, thanks everybody. Yeah. Tomorrow. Saturday, the 21st or 22nd? Yeah, 21st of May. The Collecting Society of the Gambia, which is the apex body for the collection of royalty and distributing it to artists, is going on a congress tomorrow at the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute at GTHI. All the institutes, um, associations have been written to. And uh, of course, stakeholders have been, and they've been talking on radio and TV to convince artists to come out. So I'll see your commitment if you will be appearing tomorrow. That is the first challenge I would like to ask. And the second thing is you produce music and films, oh, sorry, music and of course, album. The office of the CSD is at the annex office in Fajara. My second office in Fajara, you know there. Just right behind the GT Bank, the CSD office is there. Take your music there and sign the form for power of attorney and make sure by Monday you pay the six hundred dollars for registration or whatever. The power of attorney is actually free. It's the copyright office that you pay for that to have a license on no work, and you are able to start operating your life. Then you will be the third person, you will set a record. You will be the third person after 15 years of campaign in this country to set the ball rolling. Only three people were able to get. There is something wrong somewhere. And uh, you, the, you, I told you already, it's already two weeks since when I told you, because our conversation is you said the next day that you were going to do it. And still, you're sitting here not even doing it. So I don't have a hope that you will be the third person. And the same thing applies to him too. He said, I'm going to go to the copyright office just tomorrow. When we were on TV, still, it's two weeks. He's still, still waiting. So now you are the third person now, I'm hoping, who will be the third person to register copyright in the Gambia. Ah, it's a shame. Third person to be registered in the Gambia. None of you is ready to register. What is your I just problem? Wanna, I just want to appeal to everybody that he's just trying to hammer us. <laughs> <laughs> That's his man. That's his. But I really want you to do so. Do it, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, so you, 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 made my, you, you asked of a question regarding in terms of registration. So you see, um, we have uh, two different types of content. The first one is commercial music. That it will depend on how many people involved. It goes with a split sheet where you have to register or you have to indicate who, what role that everybody play. Yeah, the guitarist. Usually we have session artists. We have session artists. So mostly guitarists fall within the session artists. So what, when you pay them during the session, then they ends there. But the person that creates the melodies and the ones that wrote the lyrics, they are the main intellectual property owners of the composition. Right. 
which is the commercial song. Then we have something called library. Library music is something that everybody uses, but we, we, we don't see the value of it. I will put it that way. The other way I can say is jingles. You see, when, you do it, when they do a movie, or when they do doing soapy, or maybe adverts, there's always a background sound that comes, right? Those are library sounds. So you can see somebody that, who doesn't release commercial songs, but he focuses on working on library. Just create those sounds and give it to production houses. They use it for film, movie, adverts, documentaries. You make money quietly. People don't know how you are making your money, but your money is coming from the library. And if your library stands well, it will pay you money more than the commercial song. So if you, being a producer, if you can create library sounds, we can register it on your behalf. And the opportunity on that side is we market it. Because we have rights in the master, so we market it on your behalf. It's unlike commercial song whereby the record label, who owns the label, have to do the marketing. Then we only come in as a publisher and do administration to collect and distribute the income. Library, we market it, we do the tracking, we exploit, we collect, and we pay. That's how advantage that library has. So if you can create more sounds, but for local sounds, like Gambian sounds, sure, we can work with you, we can get it registered, we can market it, and obviously you'll make money out of it. The commercial sounds that you've registered, you've released already, we can register it, we follow up for performance royalties and mechanicals that is going to come in. And also, if there's a brief that is coming in, and based on the brief that your song fits into the brief, your chances of getting that deal can also work. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for what you said is very important. I just want to say just one thing. It's like uh, Seo Omar is talking about registration, which is really definitely very important. That's, one sec that, 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 that's number one. You know, you will be having uh, a protector from Anthony General. You'll be protected from Anthony General. Right. But there is something that I want to say is like um, those artists that you mentioned, they've registered their track for. 2018 G and and are they receiving uh, uh, royalties? No, but I'm just trying to say it. this is very important to register your sounds there. But there is something behind it. That's the royalties. How do we try to get that royalties to be done? So you can see if there is one or two or five artists that starting collecting um, royalties. The rest of the musicians, you don't even need to sensitize them. They will just come over. That's it. Yeah, let's just try and, 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 and make sure that okay. stands. Okay. Yeah, I just hammer you again. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, that is very brilliant. No, let me just finish with him.